So let's jump in. Thank you, Suri. Hello everyone and welcome again to the channel on ADHD, mental health, self-improvement and other related topics. And today's topic is going to be hyperfocus. And by hyperfocus on the meerkats may not be the most common of them out there, I believe that hyperfocus is really something that is often misunderstood and especially the topics that one person with ADHD or autism, which is also a disorder where uh, hyperfocus is often present. Well, how a person can actually hyperfocus on a range of topics and how it is not always about video games, even though it often is. So, what actually is hyperfocus? Uh, it is a common myth, I would say, even with ADHD, that this person has a deficit of attention. Because the attention deficit actually means that you cannot regulate the attention and you cannot really control on what things the attention will be directed. So, hyperfocus is basically the state of maximal attention towards a thing that you may or may not have willingly chosen to focus on. There are two main types of inducing hyperfocus. One of them would be something like the video games. So the common argument of how can you have ADHD, you have been playing this game for weeks, is, uh, well, really not a good argument against ADHD and it can actually be a symptom of ADHD. Games really provide you with quite immediate gratification, even in games with a delayed gratification, like for example uh, RPGs that take a long time, they are generally built in such a way that they always provide you with some stimulus. So if you achieve something, you will get a small dose of reward and these rewards just ramp up and then there will start to be achievements and new levels and maybe even new friends if it's a multiplayer game. So it is basically a simplified version of life and for an ADHD brain, this can be really tempting. So it is easy to hyperfocus on something like this and then to stay hyperfocused on it for days, for dozens of hours at the same time in extreme examples. The other type of hyperfocus would be the one randomly induced and this is really, I would say, less frequently recognized because it tends not to last that long and it is just, uh, it arises from a state of just random inattention to, to things, right? So you are just, I don't know, focusing on a couple of things. You want to do this, you want to clean up, you want to do your homework, and then you read an article randomly. You come up on your social feed and suddenly you get an urge to explore that topic deeper. And you can get hyper-focused on something that you never really cared about at all, that you don't really care about now, but like you're interested and that interest sparks hyperfocus. So you can then spend the next four hours doing something that you normally wouldn't, like researching a subject for no apparent reason, only because you cannot shift your attention away from it. And that is one of the main problems of hyperfocus. Not only you cannot control where the attention goes, but when it is already set and locked, it is really hard to shift away from it. So a normal person, or a neurotypical person rather, would be able to be interested in a subject, enjoy a game, enjoy reading about something that they haven't known before, and then when the time comes, they just shift their attention to something else. So in ADHD or autism possibly hyperfocus, you will not be able to just unlock the attention and redirect it somewhere else. Uh, mindfulness is actually a great uh, resource or a great uh, tip for people that are experiencing hyperfocus, especially random hyperfocus. Because if you are able to pause before the hyperfocus actually is, truly locks in, you may be able to tell yourself, why would I research this? I know that if I start, I may not be able to stop. 
is this something that I really want? Is this something that aligns with my goals? The classic self-development technique of mindfulness and realizing if things that you are about to do are congruent with your goal and vision can be really helpful to prevent hyperfocus. The first type, the one with video games, is a little bit harder to crack because the problem is it shares many similarities with addiction and often grows into an addiction. So the common practices with treating an addiction would apply here. With video games, for example, as I have struggled with them myself, the best case scenario is that you will be able to quit cold turkey and just stay like that for a period of time. It will seem very, very annoying and life itself may seem boring at first. But you have to realize that this is only your brain readjusting to the old stimuli. Nothing in the real world is so quickly stimulating, uh, let's say, in the long term. Of course, you can find a thrill that will stimulate you very quickly in the real life. But over the long term, the game will always trickle in big, small gratifications that will keep you interested. And in real life, that's not so easy. But real life is also much more filling. Video games often leave this sense of a void. And you also cannot rationalize why you are doing it. So when you have your, let's say, clear moments, you can understand that, why, why am I actually doing this? This is just a game. I, I really need to do something else. And when you can't rationalize it and you still keep doing it, this can lead to depression or depressive-like symptoms. So, why hyperfocus is not all bad, however, is that, well, it's hyperfocus and focus can be a good thing. So if you are really putting all your attention towards some objective, this is one of the self-development recipes for absolute domination of a field, to becoming an expert to becoming really good and to becoming successful. To earn money or to earn whatever you want, to earn a life that is congruent with the goal that you are focused on. Again, the problem being here that uh, you cannot really control it. The important part will be to try to develop techniques that will help you to shift that focus indirectly. So prevent yourself from developing the random focus by mindfulness. Prevent yourself from getting addicted to stuff like video games through, well, through real struggle, I will say. It's not going to be easy, but it's possible. You can find help, you can find therapy, you will find support in your friends or family, hopefully. So you can do that as well. And if you are able to do these indirect things, and then apply them to other things that don't align with your real goal, if you have one, of course, that's the first step, then your attention will not really have much leeway to shift to, and it will finally have to lock on what you really want to do. And once that happens, it can really boost your progress towards the next step in your life. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please drop a comment, drop a like and subscribe possibly if you are interested in more topics about ADHD, mental health and self-development. This has been Pete and I'll see you guys tomorrow.